In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Samsung's Galaxy S8. But before we do, I'd like to take a quick look at the evolution of the Galaxy lineup over the past few years, starting with the Galaxy S5. This was still an all-plastic construction with a removable back with a sort of a soft-touch material, this stuff on the sides, and of course Samsung's uh, classic design on the front with the, the logo at the top and the uh, physical button slash fingerprint sensor and capacitive keys on the bottom. After the S5, Samsung released the Note 4 and a couple of A-series phones, I believe, that mixed aluminum and plastic construction, ultimately leading up to the release of the Galaxy S6, which marked a radical new direction for Samsung in terms of both design and materials. For this phone, they used uh, an aluminum frame with a glass back and, of course, a glass front. There also was two different models, one with a flat front and this one, the S6 Edge, with a uh, curved screen on the edges. A couple of things about this phone. Um, it's very thin, um, which led to a noticeable camera protrusion um, because Samsung puts the cameras behind the display that's going to add to the overall thickness. The other thing is this phone had a flat back which coupled with the curved uh, front screen makes a rather thin edge and gives it a rather sharp feeling uh, when you're holding it. It still had the classic Galaxy look on the front with the logo and the uh, physical home button and capacitive keys at the bottom. Samsung sacrificed several useful features to make their phones prettier, however. The new glass back meant you couldn't do this anymore. There was no longer a slot to put a micro SD card and it was no longer water resistant. The Galaxy S7 follows the same formula, aluminum frame and glass on the front and back. It also has the same basic overall design. There were still two models, the uh, flat fronted S7 and uh, this is the S7 Edge again with the, uh, the curved display on the front with the same Samsung logo on the top, physical home button and capacitive keys at the bottom. Samsung did change a few things with the S7, however. The chrome embellishments were removed, and the thickness was increased, allowing for a larger battery and less of a camera protrusion. The rear edges uh, were also beveled, just like the front edges, which reduced that sharp feeling when holding it and also made it a little bit easier to pick up. Samsung also brought back a couple of the features that were lost in the transition from the S5 to the S6, like micro SD cards, and the IP68 water and dust resistance. Samsung has completely redesigned the Galaxy S8. It has an aluminum frame and Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back, but Samsung has made some significant design changes, starting with the new Infinity display on the front. Like the LG G6, the Galaxy S8 deviates from the traditional 16x9 aspect ratio. The G6 uses an 18x9, or 2 to 1, aspect ratio for its display, where the S8 uses an 18.5 to 9 aspect ratio. For the By changing the aspect ratio of the display, Samsung was able to increase the height without increasing the width, thus keeping the phone easy to use and hold with one hand. Here we can see the difference between the S8 and its 5.8 inch display and the 5.5 inch 16x9 display in the S7 Edge on the left. Despite the taller display, the S8 is actually 2 millimeters shorter than the S7 Edge and it's a significant 4.5 millimeters narrower, which makes it much easier to grip. Opening up some random web page, we can see that the S8 fits more content vertically on its display. The difference isn't huge, but we're still getting more content in an overall shorter phone. The new on-screen buttons do limit the amount of extra content you can display, and I haven't found a setting to auto-hide them yet. Another new trend this year is rounded display corners. Here I have the LG G6 which uses an LCD panel with actual rounded corners. Unfortunately, the corner itself isn't perfectly round. The Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus also have rounded display corners. Unlike the G6, however, the S8's panel still has sharp corners that are hidden behind a radius bezel. This effect produces a much smoother corner. Samsung also reduced the size of the bezels. Above the display, you still have the earpiece, front-facing camera, the iris camera, 
as well as ambient light and other sensors. Below the display is, well, nothing. The physical home button, fingerprint sensor, and the capacitive buttons are gone. Instead, the S8 now uses on-screen controls. The S8 now uses a virtual home button instead of a physical one. Here we see Samsung's always-on display, which carries over from the S7 but gets a bit of redesign. It now incorporates more information and also color. Double tapping these buttons launches the corresponding app after you've authenticated. The virtual home button is pressure sensitive. Pushing on it will turn on the display and give you some haptic feedback. You can also double tap it to turn on the display. Removing the physical home button also meant relocating the fingerprint sensor to the back. Instead of placing it below the rear camera, like on basically every other phone, Samsung placed it next to the rear camera. I really don't understand their thought process on this one. First of all, it just doesn't look balanced. It's not symmetric with the flash and heartbeat sensor on the left-hand side. Depending on how you hold the S8, the fingerprint sensor can be rather difficult to reach. Oftentimes I find myself placing my finger over the rear camera and smearing up the lens, or falling just shy of the sensor. Now I'm 6 foot 3, with larger than average hands, and if I struggle to reach it, certainly the average sized person is going to have difficulty without first readjusting their grip. Also, this is the S8, not the larger S8 Plus, which places the fingerprint sensor even further away from the bottom, and making it even more of a stretch to reach. Using the fingerprint sensor is even more difficult for lefties, because their index finger falls on the exact opposite side of the phone. Actually, trying to stretch and reach the fingerprint sensor is rather uncomfortable. With the smaller S8, I think these issues can be worked around and the fingerprint sensor is usable, but it's clearly in a horrible location, especially on the S8 Plus, where I just don't think um, people are going to be able to use it. If you find the fingerprint sensor difficult to use, you could always go back to using one of the old school methods of securing your phone, or you could use one of the S8's two other biometric security options. The new one is Face Unlock, which uses the front-facing camera uh, to recognize your face and unlock the phone. Um, I've tried to register my face several times now, and apparently I must be too ugly to use this feature because I've yet to get it to work. Um, I've tried different lighting conditions, different backgrounds, um, with my glasses, without, and it just won't unlock. Um, the iris scanner um, does actually work pretty well. Um, I enrolled my eyes just once, and it's worked every time I've used it. Okay, so using the new iris scanner, just flip up on the lock screen. Now I need to line up my eyes into the preview mask. So we'll just slide that down. There I am, and it unlocks. Uh, it actually works pretty well. Um, it's pretty fast, and it's uh, a lot easier to use than I thought it was going to be. The preview mask um, you can customize. Uh, let's go back into security. Iris scanner, I'm going to type in my super secure pin and then go under preview mask and uh, get quite a few different options here. Let's go back, see what that one looks like. There we go. If we ignore this area of the phone and that horribly placed fingerprint sensor, the rest of the phone actually looks pretty nice. The glass back, which is an absolute fingerprint magnet, still has rounded edges on the sides, which makes it comfortable to hold. Around the top, there's a microphone and the combo nano SIM micro SD tray. And on the left edge, we now have a combined volume rocker with a dedicated button for the new Bixby service just below. The power button is on the right, and down below, you have a USB Type-C connector, downward firing speaker, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. If you like the design of the Galaxy S6 and S7, you're going to love the Galaxy S8. If you don't like rounded display edges and glass backs, however, well, there's plenty of other phones out there, or you can just put this in a plastic case.